there was something strange that happened on Wall Street and it relates to a somewhat decaying old gaming company. Natasha, can you explain to me the GameStop story? Where did it start? GameStop is sort of the uh, American equivalent of EB Games. Is 400 physical stores where people used to go and, you know, get the latest Call of Duty or The Sims or whatever. Now, not so much because uh, everyone just downloads games online or streams them directly. So it was a bit of an unloved company and a bit of an unloved stock. But a Reddit forum called Wall Street Bets, which has been very active for a long time, basically rallied together and rallied its internet community around this stock, encouraging people in the community to buy it, pushing the price up, making crazy returns. And this was in response to the fact that GameStop was basically one of the most heavily shorted uh, listed stocks, which means that a lot of hedge funds and a lot of other people were making bets that the stock price would actually go down from its already really low and kind of uh, falling flat, flatlining price. GameStop was one of those companies that short sellers had targeted. They place a sort of bet on the notion that the company's share price is going to dip. And if it does dip, then they make money. But if it rises, they lose a lot of money. They basically lose that bet that they've placed in shorting. It's been a wild ride to watch for everyone, not just investors, but just onlookers in general and what internet communities can create and do to financial markets these days. Peter, what does this say about Reddit, right? You know, Reddit talks about itself as the, the front page of the internet. Lots of internet culture emerges or at least passes through Reddit in its life. Why did that particular subreddit exist in the first place? What was its purpose? Yeah, so subreddits are a kind of a news site where the users vote on stories. So if somebody posts a link to something or just makes a post, it can get voted up and in popularity. And there's a Reddit forum for people who like betting on Wall Street called Wall Street Bets. Now, one of the administrators of that particular site, whose name I can't fully say on the radio, deep (laughs) effing value, uh, is his administrator of that group. And he had GameStop shares for some time. So he has been gently pushing it, which of course is uh, motivated to do that. (laughs) But there was an analyst at Citron Research on January the 22nd who basically predicted that GameStop was about to crash. And of course, as we found out, uh, some of the big funds had shorted GameStop. So he got together on the group and said, hey, look, you know, we all love GameStop. This company is not in trouble, really. They did actually survive. You wouldn't think so, but they did survive through the pandemic. And he rallied everyone and said, come on, buy some stock and hold it and hold it so these funds will have to pay the penalty of shorting the stock, which is, it can be astronomical. In fact, I think they lost billions of dollars. So this Reddit community has been able to bring to bear a whole bunch of people, possibly for nostalgia reasons, uh, possibly because they uh, they just want to stick it to the man. They want to stick it to the traditional Wall Street. And also there's a lot of criticism of traditional financial media. They're constantly saying, don't believe what you're seeing on the TV, you know, finance channels and things like that. The other side of it is that trading has got very cheap. Apps like Robinhood don't charge any fees and that means that individual investors can easily and cheaply buy and sell shares. It definitely democratises access to buying and selling shares. So it does open up markets to more people and we don't really know what the result of that is. But, you know, in the purest sense, markets should be open to anyone who are willing to make a trade. So I don't think that's a reason um, for why these platforms shouldn't exist. Platforms like Robinhood is sort of the market leader, but there's also platforms like Stake. This is not an entirely new thing for financial markets, but it's the next stage for financial markets that in terms of the platforms themselves, combined with how social media communities, everything from Stockstream on Twitch to the subreddits that we've been discussing to Finfluencers on TikTok, these are new entrants into both the trading world, but also the giving of advice around those trades. Um, So we don't fully know what's going to happen yet. For some years, um, uh, analysts have been doing sentiment analysis on Twitter, for example, to see what people are saying about uh, shares as a way of getting a heads up early. But this game has always been about information. My father used to trade shares. He would go off to uh, a nice lunch at a nice restaurant and he would come home and buy or sell. Now, I don't know what was going on, but obviously (laughs) people talk and people would say, watch out for this one or get out of that one or, you know, pick up this. So tips were being given to people. 
And of course, there have been newsletters. Remember, Rene Rifkin used to have a newsletter with stock tips in it. Now, there were some allegations, this is a long time ago, that he would pump and dump, that he would buy something, and then he would put it in his newsletter saying, this, sh- this stock is about to go crazy. Other people would get in, and then he would sell. And as Natasha says, I think making this more democratic and more open, perhaps by having it on public social media, has got to be a good thing, but it is another shift in media, just like the news media. If you get a story in the financial review in paper on your doorstep in the morning, by the time you get that news, unfortunately, it's too old for you to make money out of it, really. There is lots more of this in the podcast. If you download this show, you can get it wherever you get your podcasts. See ya. 